answer all my questions but you hear me when I speak you don't keep my heart from breaking but when it does you weep with me you're so close that I can feel you well good morning good morning I'm the Lord be with you also with you thank you very much welcome to hope glad to see everyone just a a few announcements to share. One, I want to share if on your way out the door, um, kind of a unique thing that we found. So we are with the construction going on, been digging into every closet and opening every door. Um, there's a door that it's, I think it's an access door. It's to like utility, utility stuff, utility essentially. Stuff. I mean, it's HVAC. a door that opens up to impending doom is really what it is. <laughs> there's nothing on the other side of the door, uh, not even a floor, so... Um, but there's just enough of a little lip, lip, if you will. And then around the corner on that lip, we found a, looks like a hard briefcase almost, a large briefcase. And we thought, we found gold. Right? There's got to be treasure inside. Um, we thought something. There was no it. lock, so we didn't have to pick it. So we, we opened it up, and it is a U.S. Army chaplain's altar kit, yeah. kit so treasure of a different type yeah and and it's one of the neatest things uh, i who it is in the most obscure place this church has um how long it has been there probably since 1989 when the building was built <laughs> i have no idea um but i don't we don't know who it belongs to some people have been throwing out some names of maybe some pastors uh um, um so there's a few phone calls we may make to try to find out whose it was but uh um, y'all, it almost got walled off where it would have never been found because that door's going to go away, uh -huh. and uh, and it would have been gone. Well, not gone. It's just been there for however long till the next people do a renovation. Open up so, a wall. Um, <laughs> but uh, we put it on display out there on your way out. Make sure you stop and look at it. It really is a unique piece. It is a neat thing to to look at and observe. Um, it's got everything is able to be strapped down and tied down so so a person could kind of move and run with it even and then set it all up and yeah we might just hide it behind another wall <laughs> and um, we're not sure we have time capsules but uh, it is neat uh, so something I think it's worth maybe just looking at and peeking at um, uh, one announcement I want to share is that uh, this coming Friday is the Upbring Spring Gala. Gala. Um, and uh, so, and it is, it's a wonderful event. If you're not familiar with Upbring, it is one of the largest social services um, in the state of Texas, uh, supporting uh, uh, foster and adoption and children. And um, they do a tremendous amount of work helping mm -hmm. thousands upon thousands of kids um, throughout the state and throughout the country even. Um, they, in Lubbock, provide millions of dollars in utility support um, for the community here in Lubbock. Um, it's a wonderful event, a great time, a wonderful cause. I cannot think of a better way to uh, support our community than to go to the gala and, and uh, um, invite your friends and, and to be part of that. And so um, if you haven't bought tickets, you can do that online still. I believe you can go to the door and buy them there at the door. Um, I uh, uh, will be there, and I'm looking forward to it. It's it's a, a fun evening and a very meaningful evening. And Gabby will be there. Gabby will be there singing, with her tunes, yes. Singing with Kenny Maines and who else? Carrie Banks and all the cool kids. All the cool kids of West Texas. So, um, And so it's a great event. So I hope, I hope you all take advantage of that night out and look forward to it. And it really is a wonderful evening. Um, and then what else? You have youth stuff coming. Yeah, yeah, youth stuff. So, I mean, one, um, and this is not really youth stuff, I guess, but there's a college luncheon today, okay? It's going to be at the Radke House. I know it's not the second Sunday, um, but we're finagling things around a little bit. So college luncheon today. And, again, if you have not had Radke food, you want to have had rad key food. So that's just over there. You can grab Gabby after the service or one of us if you need directions, and we'll make sure that you can get over there. 
but that'll be a fun event. And then in terms of yeah, youth stuff that's coming up, Cross Trainers and Faith Alive will be next Sunday. Um, and so middle schoolers, we're going to focus you on Faith Alive next Sunday, the kids that are going through confirmation there. Um, but Cross Trainers for high schoolers in the evening as well. I'll send out more details in email and on the Remind. Um, so just watch that. And then a reminder to all parents or even grandparents, if you have kids in this area, that you would like to have a special, special treat on Easter morning, um, then go ahead and make sure you check out hopelubbock.com and see what our high school youth are putting together. Um, it's an awesome opportunity, a fun way to, to support our youth as well. And Gabby has one announcement. Okay, so Sunday School Parents, next Sunday is oh, Palm yeah. Sunday. So in the second service, your kid will be singing the first song. So if y'all are early service people, you can go to the early service and then like stay for the first song. That'd be awesome. There you go. Let's rise and greet those around you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Again, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
As the first book of 1 John reminds us, it says, we, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Think about that for a little bit because how often do we seek to deceive the world around us about the reality of our lives, the brokenness that's in our lives, the sin that's in our lives, right? And sometimes we get actually pretty good at it. But if we really stop and think about it, how well are we at deceiving our own selves? And sometimes as we're trying to deceive the world, what else do we do? We make an attempt even to deceive God about how good we are and how bad we are. And how's that going for us? We can't deceive the omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent God about what's really in our hearts and what's really been in our lives and what's really going on in ourselves. God already knows. But he's not a God who who lashes out in anger, but he's a God who invites us to say, come to me and share it. Confess it. Be honest about it. Be truthful with it. Confess your sins to me and do not hide them from me. Let your true self come out no matter how good, bad, or ugly it is. And hear his words of grace and forgiveness. Because if we say we have no sin, we deceive our selves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins first john continues god who is faithful and just will do what forgive our sins and even beyond that will do what cleanse us from all unrighteousness so if you would join me as we go to our lord in a moment of silence and your opportunity to confess your sins to god our heavenly father Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning as broken people, Lord, fully aware of our sins, fully aware of our shortcomings, and in need of your grace and your mercy. So we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, that you would have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins. And Lord, lead us so that we may live a life according to your precious will. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. The very good news is that Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake. He forgives you all your sins. As He called an ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Searching for a savior is the healing that you need. Is your heart completely broken? Have you lost yourself in grief? Are you buried in depression? for some peace Is your past a weight you carry Are you desperate to be free There is power power wonder working power in the blood Seeking light of this 
no captive he won't free there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the I'd like to invite children to come forward to hear a message, and parents are welcome to join your child if you'd like to. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Did y'all watch basketball last night? Did anyone watch basketball? No? No? No basketball? Oh, well, that's okay. You watch basketball? Good. Did you watch the Duke North Carolina game? Anyone feel sorry for Coach K? No, I didn't either. Yeah, I didn't either. Good. Good. We're on the same page. Today, as we do every Sunday, we are going to talk about who? Jesus. Yep, you're on it. We're going to talk about Jesus. But here's a question I want you to think about and give me an answer to Who is Jesus? Perfect. Say it again. Say it loud. Say everything here. Yeah, Jesus is God. Good. Jesus is God. Anyone else want to say add to that or no? A lot to add to God, right? What else? Who is Jesus? So Jesus. Oh, go ahead. Oh, he made the world. He is also the creator. Oh, that's a good, good answer. Think about Jesus, this, this, this human being, right? This person, right? He lived, he breathed, right? He ate food, right? Go ahead. Where, where Jesus lambs and he is the shepherd. We are Jesus' lambs and he is the shepherd. Yes, 
That's a great answer, right? Because what do lambs do to their shepherd? They follow the shepherd, right? They follow him. They listen to his voice, right? Um, and the shepherd takes care of them. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, the, who, who lived and breathed, right? He is God, which means he knows everything. Is there anything Jesus doesn't know? No, right? Isn't that amazing? Is that, um, that means if he's God, that means he's all powerful. Is, is there anything stronger than God? No. All the Avengers combined into one person get in a fight with Jesus. Who wins? Jesus. Yep, you're on it. Okay, good, good. He's all powerful. He's all, you know what else? Jesus knows everything about us. Did you know that? Yeah. The Bible talks about how he knows even how many hairs are on our head right how many hairs do you have on your head a lot yep okay we got a lot of hairs on our head he, he even knows um every thought that goes through our head is that scary yeah sometimes i don't like that fact of jesus but um but yeah he knows us so well and this jesus he came for one reason why did he come why was God, who's all-powerful, all-knowing, who knows everything, why did he come into this world and live and breathe and all that? Why? Um, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> why did he come? To help us, us help to learn, to teach us how to share with others and help other people. To teach us how to share with others and help other people. Absolutely. And you know what else he came? You know, Jesus, when talking to this pro, uh, 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 not prophet, uh, Pharisee named Nicodemus, tells Nicodemus, for God so loved the world. So part of the reason he came is because he, what? Loved us. Yep, loved the world that he gave his one and only son. How did, how did God give us Jesus? He gave us Jesus on the cross, right? Jesus gave us his life on the cross. He died on the cross. That's how much he loved us. And then it goes on, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So Jesus, this God who knows everything and is all powerful, loved us so much that he came into the world and he died on the cross to save us, right? He saved us. That's how much he loved us. And that's why he entered the world. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw a picture, if you can, of Jesus, who is God's son. Thank you so much. Y'all can go back to your seats now. Good morning. Good morning. First reading comes from chapter 3. Philippians. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I, might, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from the God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have not that I've made it my own, but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straying forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Jesus in Christ Jesus. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel reading today comes from John chapter 7. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, is it not the man who's, whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they see nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where 
who this man comes from. And when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from. But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many other people believed in him. They said, When the Christ appears, will he do more, more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go, that we will not find him? Does he intend to go by the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let, let him come to, to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some of the people said, This, is, uh, this really is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Gap Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there was a division among the people over him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. You may be seated. Lord, I pray God's grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father. And from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So at this point in our text, as we're going through the story, we're in this chapter 25 where things kind of heat up a little bit more for Jesus. And in chapter 24, Jesus does his little teaching, the Sermon on the Mount, performs some miracles, speaks some parables, and, and everybody kind of is there uh, uh, attentive to what he's saying, listening. But when you get to chapter 25, um, things start to, to rise in opposition. And this is also how many of the Gospels read. So as you're reading through the Gospels, what you end up finding is the more Jesus teaches, the more he preaches, the more miracles he performs, and the closer he gets to Jerusalem, right, as he goes to Jerusalem, um, the closer he gets to Jerusalem, the more the opposition against him increases and grows and grows and grows. Because everybody's wondering, they're sitting as they're listening to him teach and preach, and they're watching him do things that they can't explain, they're marveling at all the miracles they have seen, and they're all wondering, who is this person? Who is this Jesus? Who is this guy who, who heals people, who, who speaks with authority and claims to have the same authority as God himself? Who is this Jesus? They're all asking that question, and that's where uh, uh, our text is in John chapter 7 there. They're all wondering who he is, and they're all speaking openly, right? And they're saying, to, uh, who is this person? He comes from Galilee. When the Christ comes, we won't know where he comes from or where he's from. So he can't be the Christ because we know where Jesus is from. He's from Galilee, right? That's, that's Jesus. We know his father, right? We've heard about him. We know Galileans. We know people from that region. This can't be him. Jesus then turned to them while he was in the temple, and he says, you know me, and you know where I come from. That is true. He says, but I didn't come of my own accord. He who sent me, right, is true, and him you do not know basically accusing the very people who are sitting there wondering about this, all the Pharisees and everybody else, that they don't know who the Father is. And part of the reason they don't know who the Father is because they don't recognize who Jesus is. And he says, and by the way, the Father, God himself, is the one who sent me. At this, they weren't happy. 
They all got upset. They all started to uh, seek to arrest him, but they didn't. And then the people, con- but some of the people believed and the conversations just continued on. Who is this Jesus? So now you have people who are seeking to arrest him. Then you have some other people over here who are believing in him and trusting that he is from God. And then you have some other people who aren't quite sure at all who he is and are still pondering the question. Have we come any further today? Right? This is still where the world sits. Right? Um, we were talking, I said, C.S. Lewis says, Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. You get to decide which one, right? But he's got to be one of those three. And uh, here are the people who, uh, in, in Jesus' day are asking the same question that people today continue to ask. Right? One of the things that I always say is at some point, just about everybody in human history will have to answer to the fact of who Jesus is. You may say, well, I don't know, Pastor, there may be somebody who's never heard the name of Jesus. Well, then we may be talking about 1% of the population of the world. Okay, And I'll give you that if that's what you want. But most of the world will have to answer that question. Who is Jesus? And who is he to you? It's a question if you haven't thought about or pondered in your own life, I encourage you to do that, right? And think about who Jesus is and answer that question honestly and true. But even in Jesus' days, there were a lot of debates about who he was. This is before the resurrection, before his crucifixion. After that, even the very people who killed Jesus heard Peter's sermon and then came to faith as they understood that what they saw is the resurrected Lord whom they saw himself and even themselves put to death. So people certainly turned after seeing the very thing that which they saw, the things that were unexplainable and unbelievable. But before that, there's people who, like Nicodemus, I'm going to give you three characters and kind of their reaction. Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he is a Pharisee. So he's watching as all his compadres are getting upset and getting uh, rising in anger and seeking to arrest and eventually destroy Jesus. But he sees Jesus' teaching and miracles and thinks there's something else going on here. So he goes to Jesus' home to not raise suspicion towards himself or towards Jesus, and he says, surely, Jesus, you are from God. There's no mistaking that. I've seen the things you can do, and only somebody from God can do those things. And Jesus talks to him about it, and he gets into that discourse where he says to Nicodemus, he says, well, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus says, be born again? What are you talking about? I can't enter my mother's womb a second time and be born again? And Jesus says, no, you're thinking too much of the flesh, but you must be born of the water and of spirit, right? Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. And he says, and if you can't understand the things that are happening here on the earthly realm, then I can't explain things that are going to happen to you on the spiritual realm. And you're going to miss that. And then he says to G- uh, Nicodemus, though, that great verse that we all know so well, in John chapter 3, verse 16, right? And he says to him, For do you not know, for God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that he sent his one and only Son. And that's who I am, right? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus lays it all out for him, and he says, I am this one. I'll promise you one thing. People have accused Jesus of not claiming to be Jesus or uh, the Son of God. You cannot read the New Testament and believe that Jesus didn't claim to be God himself. He was about as blunt and obvious in that claim as any person could ever be. And this is one of those examples. Nicodemus walks away. We could call him perhaps a seeker. He's not fully sure who Jesus is but he's certainly one who's open to hearing more. Then you have Peter, another person. In Matthew chapter 16, we all know the story of Peter, always ready to be zealous with answers and responses and following Jesus. And and everybody's wondering, as it kind of similar to our John 7 text that was just read, everybody's wondering, who is this person who speaks with authority, casts out demons, right? And even the demons themselves listen to him. Who is this person who does such amazing things? And so Jesus asked him, who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, and some say you're Elijah or some other prophet of God. And then Jesus looks right at Peter and says, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter has this awesome answer, right on the money, right? 
You are the, truly you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes, Peter, you got it. You hit the nail on the head. You got it right. And so Jesus says, this is why I came. It is necessary that I go to the cross and I suffer at the hands of man and I die. And Peter says, no, 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 no. Surely that's not the case. That will never happen to you over my dead body. Ironic enough as that is, if you know the whole story of Peter. And what is Jesus' response? Get behind me, Satan. So Peter, so good and then so bad, so quick, right? He understands, he's got the picture of who Jesus is, but he doesn't quite grasp and understand what Jesus came to do and why it is that he was here. He doesn't quite all understand it. So here we have Peter who, who's got the right answer, but, but yet doesn't quite fully understand what that means for Peter and for Peter's life. We'll call him a believer who's lacking a little uh, following, perhaps. Then you get to one more character who's Caiaphas. Now, Caiaphas is the high priest, right? As the high priest, right? He's the, the one that is the, the high priest of all the, the Jewish faith there. And, and, the, and, and, and so as Jesus is on trial, he goes to the high priest, and that's where he starts his trial off. And as he's there at the high priest, they're throwing out all kinds of accusations against him. They're saying he claimed that he'll tear down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days, right? He's claiming to be the son of God. Jesus remains silent through all of it. Finally, Caiaphas turns to Peter or to Jesus and says, okay, Jesus, you've heard the accusations against you. Do you not have any defense? Jesus remains silent. And then Caiaphas says, are you or are you not the son of God? And Jesus says, I am. You said it, not me. I mean, he just boldly says it, right? He says it, and as he says it, what does the high priest do? He tears his clothes, and he says, you've heard it from his own mouth. What he has declared, there's nothing left to do to him except death. So Caiaphas heard the proclamation. We'll call him an unbeliever, a denier. Okay, he heard the proclamation. He knows what Jesus has done, but yet when it comes down to it, he says, nope, not at all. Death for this one. Who do you say Jesus is in your life? Now, here we are, right? We're in a kind of a context, a Lutheran church, and I'm sure that every one of us would say, oh, I know the answer. Jesus is the living God, right? He's the one who came to die on the cross for us. He's the one who's, who, who gave us life and salvation, and now I get to go to heaven. And that's who Jesus is. We know that answer. But I mean in your life, you know, so if I'm asking myself this question, I'm looking in the mirror, and I look myself square in the eyes and say, Eric, let's be honest right now. Who is Jesus for you? See, one I get to talk about and proclaim, but when it comes to living Eric's life, I get to live my life. Oh, and don't worry about when I live my life, when things go wrong, I can just go back to Jesus. Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Paul says, by no means. Who is Jesus to you? When we say he's Lord, is he Lord over your life? And sometimes I will look in that mirror and I'll ask myself that same question, Eric, is Jesus Lord over your life? And then there's parts of my life I say, yeah. And then there's a lot of parts of my life I say, you know what? Eric still likes to be Lord over that part. And who is Jesus to you? It's, it's a question that every single one of us needs an answer to. So then when somebody turns to you and God be praised if we get an opportunity if somebody looks to you and says, well, who are you? Tell me about yourself. 
We don't answer that question always with job and profession and school and education and family and hobbies and what we do. We can say, I am someone who bends my knee to Jesus, the one who is Lord and Savior of all and who went to the cross and he suffered and died. And in the waters of baptism, he gave me that very gift of his death and resurrection and gave me a new name and a new identity and a new life. So who is Jesus to me? He is everything, every part of who I am belongs to him every single part of it how much of Jesus or how much of us does Jesus want all of us who is Jesus to you and when we can share that message of who Jesus is to us to somebody else Man, what a glorious thing that is. We can say to someone, Jesus is everything to me. My identity, my salvation, it's who I am. Without him, I'm nothing. With him, I'm everything. I have purpose, I have meaning, I have joy, I have fulfillment in all things because of what Christ has done for me. He's everything to me. I give him everything. My life is for him because that's who he is. He is Lord of the world, a world of which I'm part of, which means he's Lord over my world and Lord over my life. And I pray that he would be that for everyone. And when we get to share that message with somebody who is lost or hurting or can't find fulfillment or can't find purpose, can't find greater meaning in life, who, you know, one of the things they talk about is the younger generation is always looking for a bigger purpose, a greater meaning, to be part of something grander than what they are part of now. I say there's nothing more grand in this world to be part of than the life of the Lord. What else is there? You can't be part of something bigger than that. The story of creation to the story of its end. And you're part of it. You're a character, not just a character in it. You're the character in it. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. You've heard this before, perhaps, but we can insert our name in place of world, right? For God so loved Ron, right? You just caught my eye, I'm sorry, but that's a good thing he did, it's true. (laughs) For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. We get to share that message because Jesus is Lord of our lives. Now may his peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue our worship right now as we gather our offerings. This is a chance for us to take some of the gifts that God has blessed us with and return them to his service.
please stand. We pray that you'd bless us, Lord, so that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. We join and speak our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night when Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
stand. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you steadfast in the true faith, the life everlasting. Depart in the peace that comes from heaven above. Amen.
No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. opportunity to go to that God and, and appeal to him and his overwhelming love to care for us and those we love. We've got a number of families that are listed in our, our bulletin. I ask that you continue to pray for them. And we've got a couple of additional prayer requests. Marvin, um, you sent in a prayer request. I haven't had a chance to talk to you, but um, I think you said your cousin um, has had a daughter that's been diagnosed with a very difficult disease. I don't know. Am I saying it? Treacher Collins, I think is what people said it's called. So um, we want to be praying for her. What's her name? What's the little girl's name? Okay, all right. So we'll just pray for the daughter, and I all, and God certainly knows uh, how to pronounce that name better than I can, all right? So we'll be praying for that little one and uh, for the whole family to support her during this hard time. Um, we've had people, you know, praying and, and asking for continued prayers, of course, for the, the people of Ukraine. Um, and someone added to me this morning, let's pray for our enemies there, too. So often we, we forget that, you know, we look at the other side and and. Jesus encourages us, pray for those you love, but also pray for your enemies and those who persecute you. Um, and then for our hope, friends, and family this week, um, we are praying for, for Roger Schuster. Um, Schwedes, I know I saw you all earlier. Where am I? There we go, right there. We're going to be praying for you guys this week and for Jerry and Dale Sillerud as well. So let's go to our God right now. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your incredible, incredible love. Um, your love so great that as a father, you sent your son to die on our behalf. We thank you that, that your son did come and that we have the person of Jesus Christ that we can look even at the crucifix up in front of us right now that reminds us of how incredible that love was that laid down its life on our behalf. Lord, we thank you that you've taken our sins and the pain and the brokenness of this world on your shoulders. And we thank you for the chance to celebrate in these weeks to come. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd be with your children, your sons and daughters who are suffering. We pray for Lauren and Danny, Ingrid and Deborah, for Eldon and Linda, for Barbara and Sharon, Donald and Carlene, Gladys and Wayne, Frida and Jennifer, for Herman and Josh, Vernon and Mike, for Dana and Marvin's cousin and, and her little daughter as well. Lord, that you lift them up in these trials, that you'd strengthen them, and that you grant your healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine and also for our enemies, Lord. We pray that you, you would grant mercy and, and, and strength and resolve to those who are, are facing the, the horrible invasion. And Lord, that you would melt and soften the hearts of those who, who are the enemies in this case. Lord, you know everything that's going on in this world and you know uh, how you can work these things out according to your good purposes. And so we place that into your hands. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, um, uh, for the little bits of grace and rain that we received this past week, but, but for more we pray, Lord. Um, you care for your earth. You created it and you continue to care for it. And so we trust in your will there as well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, for all of Hope Lutheran Church and School, for every single one of our families, but especially this week, we pray for Roger Schuster, for Gary and Diana Schwady, and for Jerry and Dale Sillerun that you lift them up for the challenges they face and also to count the blessings you give. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy.
Lord, these prayers and everything else that's in our hearts and minds, we pray because we know you as our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor, and grant you his peace. Amen. Y'all go in peace and serve the Lord. We'll see y'all on Wednesday, too.